Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler, May 30th, 2018. So what I'm gonna to do today is provide a little update on a subject that we spoke about last week. And this was that the GFS models were showing a potential for a very warm scenario during late May in the over the Arctic Ocean and that this scenario had the potential to accelerate sea ice loss. Now, thankfully, what we did see was that although the Arctic was warmer than normal during late May, it wasn't quite as warm as what GFS models were indicating. And this is something that we have warned about that the GFS models had come in a bit hot. But what we have seen is that on average, late May Arctic Ocean temperatures have been above average through, throughout this time period. And so we've tended to see temperatures running nearly a degree Celsius above average for the Arctic Ocean region. And this, this has had a bit of an impact on sea ice and, and this is a, a climate change related signal in general um, with re relation to sea ice loss. We have seen considerable sea ice losses during summer and, and during most parts of the year. And summer is a concern because this is when the warmest temperatures occur in the Arctic in, in general and when the Arctic tends to push a bit above freezing. Now, from an anomaly standpoint, we have seen the highest above average temperatures for the Arctic during winter. However, there is a, we, we see the greatest overall, overall reductions in sea ice during summer, meaning that the lowest extent of sea ice occurs during September. And, and there is some concern that the Arctic Ocean eventually will be ice-free perhaps by 2030, per, perhaps sooner if, if temperatures are unexpectedly warm. And this, this is one of the reasons why we monitor summertime temperatures, especially during June, because June provides a setup for, for the rest of summer melt. And what we are seeing, I'm going to go ahead and look at shorter range forecasts because shorter range forecasts have tended to be more accurate in the GFS model. So what we are seeing for June of 2018, at least for early June, is that temperatures for the Arctic are expected to remain above average, that warm air is expected to run in from central Siberia, from just north of Alaska, and from Scandinavia, and that overall temperatures above the Arctic Ocean are expected to edge to near to above freezing for most regions. Now, this north of Greenland region here uh, has recently been a little cooler than average or, or about average, but overall, according to the GFS model run, this is June 4th, uh, we are expected to see above average temperatures. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run the model for the GFS model for the next five to six days. And so we can see what the model expects to occur over the Arctic Ocean. And what we are seeing is that the temperatures for the Arctic are predicted to remain between about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius and, and one degree Celsius or more above average. And that the tendency for the Arctic Ocean is, is to remain above average and for the Arctic Ocean edge zones, we start to see a tendency for <clears throat> much warmer than normal conditions, particularly in central Siberia, over Alaska, over Scandinavia, and over parts of Greenland. So I'm going to run this out to about June 4. And at this time, we start to see some, some rather severe excursions in the model, approaching 2 degrees Celsius above average for the Arctic. And if this were to occur, this would be a, a very considerable strain on 
the sea ice within the Arctic Ocean environment. So I'm going to go ahead and look at uh, sea ice and where we are presently. So, so as you can see, so this is this is a graph of, of sea ice over the years. It it starts in the 1980s, and as you can see, the, this 1980s line is is the dashed line at the top. And as you can see, sea ice has suffered considerable reductions since the 1980s. The, the colored lines are, are recent years, and, and the most recent years are in orange, green, and red, and yellow. And presently, during 2016, at this time of year, as we approach June, we are seeing Arctic sea ice totals at second or third lowest on record. And this is the red line here. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that for you. That's where we are presently. And you can see that, that we're, we're somewhat close to <clears throat> 2016 line here and the, the 2015 lines. But, but we're presently at, at second lowest on levels. 2016 was the lowest on level for this time of year. Here, I'll show you that. And this is, this is where we are today. Now, as we enter early June, we're, we're entering kind of a, a critical time for sea ice. And so we could, if, um, if temperatures remain above average or considerably above average, what we could see is more melt ponding and more acceleration of melt than expected during June. And, and, and if that occurs, there's a potential that the present melt trend could dive below the record low line. Now, if it tends to be a little bit cooler than predicted uh, because the GFS model has run hot, then the trend line that we presently see could moderate and we might see a, a scenario where melt is relatively significant and we get down close to 4 million square kilometers at the end of melt season, but, but nothing that is uh, a new record low. So, so these are the scenarios that we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and also look at the Arctic Ocean and give you an idea where the melt trends are occurring now. I'm going to play an animated map from May 23rd to May 30th. This is a NASA satellite image of the Arctic Ocean. So, so as we play this, this animation, we see that Melt is advancing in this region over here in the Chukchi Sea. We've seen much warmer than normal temperatures there throughout the winter. We also see that sea ice melt is advancing here in the central Siberia region and that the Beaufort Sea is, is breaking up and that we have large Polinius, Polinius forming there. We also see that the sea ice edge is greatly reduced in this region north of Svalbard for this time of year. And what this shows us is that overall sea ice melt action is occurring in the Arctic Ocean region and less so in these peripheral zones near eastern Siberia or in Baffin Bay or down here in Hudson Bay. So, so if this warming trend continues over the Arctic Ocean, we can expect to see a, a, a deepening of, of the above average melt trend that we see in the central Arctic or in the Arctic Ocean regions and this is this 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 trend, if it does occur, would be critical for potential sea ice losses later come August and September. And so just to reiterate, the present time frame that we are entering is one that is that will be critical for the state of sea ice come August and September. And if the present forecasts hold and we do see above average temperatures over the Arctic, then those risks of potentially seeing record or, or near record lows at the end of melt season are enhanced.